Hey, this is Kenneth with the Fremont Cabal Internet Exchange, and today I want to talk to you about Ethernet switches and fiber optics. So, what we have right here is an Arista 7050-64 Ethernet switch, which Arista was kind enough to contribute to the FCIX, so hey, thanks Arista. Um, and one thing that kind of jumps out about this switch is that on the front of it, it doesn't have any of what most people would call a traditional Ethernet port, well, with the exception of the management port here on the end. So, for example, looking at just a standard D-Link unmanaged switch, on the back of it, it has what most people would expect on an Ethernet switch, which is going to be RJ45 copper ports, right? So you take a copper Ethernet cable and you would plug it into each one of these. It comes up as an unmanaged switch. Yay. Um, but there's a problem with copper Ethernet in that it's relatively limited, particularly in its range, is a copper Ethernet port can only go reliably for about 100 meters, which inside of your apartment or your house is perfectly sufficient. Inside of even an office building, if it's a relatively small office, is still sufficient. But if you're trying to go from building to building or from one building across town to another building, 100 meters can be grossly insufficient. And so obviously there needs to be some form of Ethernet better than just copper Ethernet for going those long ranges. And that's where fiber comes in, right? And so I think everyone, you know, possi possibly mo a lot of people have seen fiber before. This is single mode fiber, which is identified by the fact that it's yellow, but this obviously can't plug into a ethernet switch like this. And the problem is there's actually many different types of fiber transceivers. There's ones on multi-mode fiber, which is your orange or aqua fiber, which can go a few hundred meters, like 300, 500. And then you have single mode fiber where you can go, depending on the optics, you can go for 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 40, 80 kilometers, and it's going to totally depend on which one you need, right? Some people will need 80 kilometers to go across town. Some people will need 10 kilometers just to go to the opposite side of campus. And so building fiber transceivers into a switch, like you build copper transceivers into it, can be needlessly limiting. And so what you see on a lot of switches, like this Cisco 3560, is that you will have a fixed number of copper ports and then a limited number of kind of uplink SFP cages. So SFP is this uh, square socket up here, which is kind of a standard modular connector that allows you to select any specific fiber transceiver you need and plug it into it. So for example, this is a Cisco LX one gig transceiver, which on one side has the SFP connector on it, which has about 20 pins on it. And then on the other side is an LC duplex fiber connector. And so one, one, of, the, one, of, the, the, one of these is the transmit, I guess pin, although fiber is probably a better term. And the other one's the received fiber. And so you have a cable like this that has two fibers. One of them, the data is flowing this way. The other one, the data is flowing this way. And so this, just plugs right into the SFP cage, like that. And then you can just take whatever fiber mates with it, which actually it's often color coded. So the fact that this has a blue handle on it indicates that you should be using it with single mode fiber, which typically has a blue connector. And that just plugs right into it like that. And so now this, we can take up to 10 kilometers away and still be able to talk to the switch, which you obviously can't do with the copper ports on here. And so, that idea of having a totally modular interchangeable device here can actually be taken to an extreme on something like this 7050 where it's almost entirely SFP cages. And in this case actually isn't SFP cages, but are SFP plus cages, which don't support one gig, but actually 10 gig, right? And so if we needed one port here to be a one gig LX fiber, we can plug that in. If we instead, needed, really needed for some reason, some short run copper, you can actually in the SFP form factor get a standard RJ45 copper transceiver. So we could plug that in as well. And since it's an SFP plus, you can actually put 10 gig transceivers in them, which look practically identically the same. So this is a Chelsea SR transceiver. So it's a short range um, 10 gig so it's you know only a few hundred meters over multi-mode. And so you could, you know, for a certain port, need to have that as well. 
and plug that in. And so SFP Plus supports both 1 gig and 10 gig generally. And then one, th one thing about the 7050 is that it actually also has four QSFP Plus ports. Is it's, it's called the 7050-64 because there's 64 10 gig ports. 48 of them are made up by the actual SFP Plus cages. And then a QSFP Plus port is really four SFP Plus cages all kind of squished into one form factor. So it's actually it's four times 10 gig that you can actually break out again out to four separate uh, 10 gig lanes. So there's four of those, so four times four is 16, 48 plus 16 is 64. And that's how the marketing math works to give you 64. And so you can take a QSFP optic, which looks like this, and you can plug that into there. One thing to note about this one that I managed to scrounge is that it doesn't have an LC duplex connector on it. So if you compare it to this, if you compare this Cisco optic, which has a pair of LC connectors on it with this brocade optic, it has uh, two studs and then it's got inside of it, which are really tiny, you can't see them, 12 fibers. And this is a, it's actually a 12 fiber connector called an MPO connector, which is great because it uses eight of the fibers for literally four separate LR 10 kilometer, 10 gigabit transceivers in this PLR4 optic, parallel LR times four which is great because you can then get like an MPO to eight LC cable that breaks them out and you can plug it into four different servers. And so we could have four more servers plugged into each one of these QSFP, uh, QSFP plus cages. But for the specifically what FCIX wants, which is we have two of these switches in different buildings and a pair of fibers between them, that actually doesn't do us any good because uh, we don't have eight fibers that you would need for a PLR, PLR4 optic, we only have two. And so we are either stuck using not an LX optic, but an LR optic, which would give us 10 gig, or we need the right QSFP plus optic, which would be a just an LR4. And this is where our second sponsor, Flex Optics, kind of came to our rescue um, and was gracious enough to actually give us two LR4 optics. So let's talk about Flex Optics and let's talk about the fact, uh, the branding on optics. So all of, this, all of the optics that we happen to have already, it was a Cisco, it's a Cisco, it happens to be a Chelsea, and it happens to be a Brocade. And the, the problem is, even though they're mechanically standard form factors, there's inside of the uh, memory map in, and the EEPROM on these optics, every vendor uses, uses all the data, the registers slightly differently, which arguably shouldn't have happened. And so it's a little bit annoying that this is the situation we're in, but it means that optics aren't entirely interchangeable vendor to vendor. So the fact that I've got a whole bunch of Cisco optics, and a whole bunch of brocade optics, means that they on paper can't be used with this Arista switch. Many switches and many switch vendors actually do support, you can log into the switch and turn off the alarms that it posts and, and, and turn off the fact that it refuses to use third-party optics. So we can get these working, but it's not as ideal as having optics that are coded and programmed to specifically to work with a Swiss um, Arista gear. And so the appeal of flex optics is that they're a third-party optics vendor that gives you these flexible optics that you can actually reprogram depending on which switch you're in, right? Um, other vendors, other third-party vendors will sell you their optic pre-coded for like Cisco or Arista, but then when you need to migrate from one switch to another, it's like we're migrating from a Cisco switch to this, um, all those Cisco optics that we already have do us no good. But Flex Optics, on the other hand, they what they do is they give you the optics entirely unprogrammed, and then you get from them also what's called the Flex Box, which is this you know kind of you know smartphone sized device that has on it ports for SFP, QSFP, and XFP, which is another modular optics form factor, and this is actually a programmer 
so that I can take one of these optics and plug it in and reprogram it, right? And so given this LR4 optic, which is, as you can see, has LC connectors on it, I need to program this to work on this uh, Arista switch. And so I just plug it into the QSFP port and then I can plug this into my computer and I, it, it supports Windows, Mac, and Linux. But one thing that I actually found, discovered once I got this that was pretty neat, is it actually also supports Android. And so, given my Android, I plugged in a USB on the go adapter for it, installed their application, and I can actually plug the Flexbox into my smartphone. And so, given the box, it would plug it in and it discovers it. And so it asked me to insert a transceiver so I can then plug the LR4 optic back into it. It says it's re reading the transceiver with a dramatic pause. And it literally just now drop, pops up a list, which I don't know if you can see that. Um, it, it lets me pick from whatever vendor I want to code this optic for that I like. And so right on the top of the list, uh, or not quite at the top, we have Arista. So um, we can code this optic as an Arista QSFP 40 gig LR4 which is the Arista model that we want. And obviously you can only do this with, well, not obviously, but you, you can only do this with flex optics optics in this, which is reasonable. And so we can sit here and we can say program, and it's going to write it to the uh, transceiver. And so, and then it comes up with a checkbox. And then what's actually kind of neat is you can also then check a automatically reconfigure next transceiver as well to um, the same thing, which obviously, because you know, presumably you're gonna be reconfiguring multiples at once, and then that's it. And so we now have a QSFP plus optic, which is coded to appear like it is an Arista optic. And so we can now plug this one in to one of these QSFP cages. And when I, if I were to turn on the switch, it would come back and complain, complain, well, this is a Cisco optic. It's you know a Cisco Cisco transceiver. It's not you know usable. This is a Chelsea trans optic. It's not usable. It's a brocade optic. It's not usable. But this one, uh, it's a res resistor one. We are a okay. So obviously the 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 flexibility of the flexbox is pretty neat. Um, but more than anything else, I, I hope that you got out of this kind of the various SFP and related uh, transceivers that you can plug into these modular switches. Um, and so if you ever see one of these in the wild, you kind of know what you're looking at. So again, this is Kenneth from the Fremont Cabal Internet Exchange. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.